everybody. Hans Vater here once again at New Life Church with another devotional reading from Juanita Ryan's book, An Enduring Embrace, and Experiencing the Love at the Heart of Prayer. This week's devotional is titled, Taking Inventory as Prayer. The verse is from Psalm 139, 23 through 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Again, that's Psalm 139, 23 through 24. We are often blind to our own failings. We do not see our prideful motives or greedy ways. We do not understand how our choices and behaviors are hurting others. We may not even be aware of the fears and anxieties that drive us and hold us captive. If anything is to change, we will need help to know ourselves better. We need God's help in order to take regular inventory of our lives. And so we pray as the psalmist prayed. We ask God to help us take inventory of our lives. And with God's help, we make an honest assessment of our anxieties and of our offensive ways. Usually when a conflict surfaces in a relationship, our instinct is to reflect on the way that the other person needs to change. But when we catch ourselves and pray, God, show me what my part is in this conflict. How am I contributing to this problem? What do I need to do differently? We inevitably will be shown places we need to change. As God responds to our prayer to search us and show us, we begin to see our self-serving motives. We are given new awareness of the anxious thoughts that keep us defensive in the situation. We begin to understand the roadblocks we put up to being truthful, respectful, and loving toward others. When we ask for this kind of help, as the psalmist did, God's Spirit shows us our selfish hearts, our fears and anxieties, our selfish ways. It can be helpful to write down what we sense God is showing us, and then to ask for God's help to change. We can ask God to free us from self-centeredness, the fears and anxieties, the defensiveness and the offensiveness that the Spirit has revealed to us. There are many other ways to take inventory. Just to take one example, the Oxford Group Movement in the early 1900s advocated making a regular written inventory by dividing a piece of blank paper into four sections. In one section, we ask God to show us where we have been less than absolutely loving. In another section, we ask God to show us where we have been less than absolutely pure. In a third section, we ask God to show us where we have been less than absolutely honest. And in the fourth section, we ask God to show us where we have been less than absolutely unselfish. Then we wait quietly and write down whatever comes to our minds. However we take inventory, we need to do it with God's help. That is, we need to do it as the psalmist did, as an act of prayer. It is good to ask for God's loving correction in our lives on a daily basis. It will be painful to see the error of our ways, but the practice of inventory takes us to a place where God's grace can meet us. It is a place where it is possible to experience God's unconditional love and forgiveness. And adapting the prayer that Miss Ryan has composed from first person into uh, a plural. Lord, we are in the dark. We are blind to our own selfishness and greed. We do not see our pride and defensiveness. We are anxious, but we deny even our anxiety. Show us the error of our ways. Show us where we need to change. Show us where you would correct us and heal us. Help us to take inventory. Lead us in your way. Thus concludes the devotional part. Uh, I would only add that this is a challenging thing to do, and in, 
And if I'm absolutely honest, I have not done the Oxford inventory method, partially because I'm afraid of what I'll find if I uh, take the time to do the inventory. On a deeper level, though, sometimes I think we can be afraid not only to look uh, at what sins and errors we've committed or have committed through failing to do things we were supposed to do, um, but we can also become afraid that those will become reasons for God to abandon us or that we have to fix these problems ourselves first before we can come to God. And frankly, it can be overwhelming, uh, particularly if we fall into a morbidly introspective mood when conducting such an exercise. I think there are at least two things to say about this sort of worry. The first is, as Ms. Ryan pointed out, this needs to be an exercise done with God's help. We need to pray for God's Spirit to be the one to show us and not let our own uh, anxious consciences be the ones that direct us in this task. Finding the difference splitting the difference between the two, trying to hear and discern God's uh, voice uh, over against our own sometimes harsh voices, uh, voice, can be a difficult task, but it's one that we need to learn how to do and can do with God's help, and sometimes we can do it in conversation with other people, um, tell them what we think God is saying to us or how he's speaking to us in this particular situation. So the first thing to say is that this needs to be done uh, as an exercise with God's help. And then the second thing would be to point out something that was brought up in last week's devotional, which is that Jesus is the great physician. When we see sort of the, the if we take, if we think of sin as kind of an illness of the, or sickness of the soul, we realize that we can't fix these problems on our own uh, we can't deal with them on our own strength before coming to God, and He doesn't actually expect us to. Sort of like the prodigal son, we just need to come home to the Father um, before things can be put right. And so, even so, when we're doing this sort of inventory, as we're noting things and confessing them, we need to bring them to God and ask for His help and trust that Jesus, our healer, will deal with the problem rather than trying to fix it on our own strength. So now that I've rambled long enough, I think that's probably a good place to conclude with this week's devotional, and hopefully we'll see you again next time, next week, for another devotional thought from An Enduring Embrace. Thanks and God bless.